this audio we're talking about over here. Right, no, no, okay. we just got to it. We're back here at the you Civic know, Center. <laughs> I've heard a thing or two. And uh, here in the booth here with us to start out the Civic Center. Everybody's friendly up here. Even, That's right. Even the guys in the black and white stripes. We got a special guest here with us, Logan Assistant Coach Zach Green. Join us here in the second half. Welcome, welcome to the broadcast, Zach. How you doing, Tony? Well, we're doing good. <laughs> yeah, excellent. At least we got basketball here today. Chris Lincoln Miller count. getting the. <laughs> got a little different matchup here for you, man. Uh, you got double A instead of a triple A, double triple A here. Yeah, Lincoln County has actually surprised me. They're uh, they're scoring the ball really well right now, and uh, they're actually they got a lot of athletes. They're long, pretty athletic. Uh, seem well coached. And here we go, another steal here by uh, Cody Williamson of Lincoln County Panthers. Get over to left side, Hunter Lambert. He's going to drill up to the top of the key. Right side, Alex Elkins. Back up to Hunter Lambert. Back to Elkins. Right side, are looking to set up this offense. Right side, Cody Williamson. Back out to Elkins. Even go with Blankenship on the win- on the elbow there. Left side, Lambert. Elkins are working around to. Oh, good pass. Nice job by Elkins. Nice job. Can't connect on him. You can't complain about that shot selection at all. It's 23. Brett Morris leads the way back up for Webster County on the left side. Yep. Andrew White, the leading scorer in the first half. Good hustle. Hunter Lambert. Uh, I mean, excuse me. Uh, Coach. What's his name? And then he <laughs> hustles over. back for the box out. That's that's what you want in the player right there. A lot of effort. That's what you like to see out of your boys. And Coach Green, you know, hit the deck, not to be scared to hustle. Oh, yeah. you got to love those type of players. Going down low, Coburn with the nice up and under. The junior getting his first basket. Now every starter has got to score and hit the scoring books for Lincoln County. Well, Tony, after that that beautiful display of hustle there, he uh, had a nice finish on the other end with his with the left hand, with the off hand. That's nice. A lot of a lot of good play from him so far here in the second half. And a good look that ended up in the hands of Chris Miller of Webster County as he cut across the baseline there and finished it with the right hand. 42-28, Lincoln County maintaining. That 16 point lead. At least Webster County showing a little bit of life here in the second half, Tony. We. Man, they look, they struggled in the first half, last two or three minutes of the second quarter. They really did, uh, you gotta wonder, if, you had to wonder what Coach Dean was telling them to him at the half, if they were gonna fire him up, and Cody Williamson, if that's a sign of things to come, it could be a long second half for him. He had the hot hand there in the first. Cody Blankenship not able to run down the rebounds that goes in the hands of Andrew White. Brett Morris. Trying to hang on to it. Andrew White giving it over to the hands of Hunter Given. Down low is going to be mm. number 12 is going to be fouled. Seth Clayton. Yeah. I like Lincoln County's defensive effort. They uh, they have great effort. All, I mean, all the time. They're, they're nonstop. They, uh, they show real good effort here. Uh, number 20, Cody Williamson of Lincoln County picking up his first foul. Only five fouls in the first half and only one so far in the first three minutes here in the third quarter. So... Well, at refs letting them play. Mm-hmm. Maybe I spoke too soon. Now is now Tyler Coburn's going to get one. Got Kyle Sheff on his feet, didn't he? Yes, he did. Uh, Got to be set on that one. That's his uh, second personal. That's the first player of either team with two fouls. At this stage of the game, that's not considered foul trouble. That was a nice move and a nice pass. Bad catch. Brent Morris. The leader of Webster County there, number 23, as Coach Green just said, looking for that extra man down low, that extra pass. And Lincoln kind of not able to capitalize it here on this one. They're going to keep the lead still at 14 at 42-28 here in the third quarter. Andrew White getting ready to, on the right-hand side, getting it over to Chris Miller. Seth Clayton. Put down low for Hunter Given. Back out to Clayton. Pump fake. Nice step in to the shot. He had it. He was squared up. Alex Elkins trying to save it. Mm-hmm. And it goes off the hands of Chris Miller. Hustle once again paying off for the Panthers. Well, that, me and Tony talked about earlier. You're a former Logan High basketball player. You got to play here in the Civic Center. You know, tell our, tell our viewers, you know, what it meant for you to come over here and be able to play in these type of events. 
Oh, it was great. I, I always loved playing here at the Civic Center. It was almost, especially once I got to college and played in the West Virginia Conference Tournament, um, it was almost like a home floor for me. You know, uh, uh, when Logan comes to the state tournament, they you know, they got a saying, the last person in town turn off the lights because it really is. It, they bring a huge crowd, almost unlike any crowd in the state, you know, when it comes to state tournament time. This place is packed. And, it, you know, just to have that many people that you know and, um, they're there to support you, and it's a great feeling, you know. Cody Williamson wasn't expecting that one, as that one hit him right in the side of the head. That's one way to take one for the team. Absolutely. No ball will stay here with Webster County, obviously, off that one. It's one way of stepping into the passing lane yeah. as well. <laughs> <laughs> Between. They want to say you want you as a defensive position. They want you between your man and the ball. <laughs> he didn't quite lead him well enough on that pass. He uh, kind of threw it to where he thought he was going to be and not where he where he was. Coach, let's jump ahead a little bit. You know, let's talk about the, your game tonight. It'll be the primetime game showcase. You know, as uh, as you'll be hosting the GW Patriots. I'm sure you've got to see the Patriots. You know, who. who do you pick your poison with that kind of team? Um, well, they're very solid in, in all aspects. Um, Gord is, is probably going to be the X factor. You know, if, if we can slow him down some, I think we can handle him. And uh, uh, Key is going to really be keeping him off the glass. Um, they're a big team. You know, they six 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 seven inside, very athletic. They have uh, solid guards. Um, uh, we're going to be down Paul Williams tonight. He's got a a, a really I, uh, I think it's, I'm not exactly sure, he got a deep uh, muscle bruise in his leg, his whole leg's purple, so he's going to be out tonight, so it's going to be really key for, you know, some of our younger guys to come in and have big games for us. Okay, and as you saw there, Webster County, the ball right, kick the ball out, we'll go back here to Lincoln County. Now, Zach, uh, now who do you, in your opinion, who do you need to step up here for Logan tonight with the absence of Paul Williamson? Well, um... You know, we've got a couple guys that come off the bench who can really score the basketball, and they can really give us some things. Um, Keaton Johnson, he's probably probably our second best pure shooter behind Paul on the team. He it, and he can score the basketball. Um, we've been trying to be a little, get him to be a little more assertive with the ball, um, but we'll see tonight. Also, uh, Brendan Street, who is a freshman, um, he's about five ten, five eleven freshman with. Uh, He's got great leaping ability. He's got great, great intensity, uh, great athletic ability. Uh, he's actually been playing some for us on the varsity level after his freshman season was over, and uh, he's given us pretty good minutes right now. Um, to win a state championship, you have to have guys like him. That, I mean, he brings intensity, defense, rebounds. Those are the things you need, you know, and uh, we're hoping that uh, he can continue to grow as a player and, and help us out. Okay. He looked pretty good against Huntington, Coach Green, so I know that he'll be, Patch will have him probably ready for tonight after a week of practice. Oh, yeah, especially with Paul being out and playing against, this will be a great experience for him tonight to get in and, and play against a high-level team like GW. Um, we're, we're hoping the best for him. I love the kid. He's a great kid, great attitude. He loves the game. Uh, he's, he's a coach's dream, you know. He, he's one of those guys that you don't think is paying attention. You'll say, hey, what did I say? And he'll, uh, he'll turn around and repeat everything you said right back to you. Substitution on the floor coming in is a sophomore Nathan Kremens, one of the future players of Lincoln County. You know they're real excited on him. He comes in for a senior leader Cody Blankenship, who's been shut down in the second half as he had six, 16 in the first. Alex Elkins firing it from the corner, and there once again they're loving that baseline shot, John. I tell you what, if you, if you let Lincoln County get their feet set, they're gonna you're gonna be miserable all night because they they don't miss a lot of open shots. You know they get their feet set and have time to get the basketball off the. They can make they can for definitely easily score the basketball. They run that five out offense, which is pretty much designed for a team full of guards like they have, and they're they're running it well. Nate Kremens there with the rejection. Maybe tall and lanky. Showing a little bit of that promise, ain't he, Tony? Yeah, them gangly arms has got up there and swapped out. And he's, you can tell he's one of them kids that hasn't quite grown into his body yet. And uh, Zach, you know about that. You got T.J. Tomlin down there, a six-eight, fifteen-year-old. 
Yeah, he, uh, you know, TJ, a, a lot of people doubt TJ, but TJ, uh, he, I think he has a big upside. If he continues to work like he should, the sky's the limit for the kid, you know, but it's up to him whether he uh, whether he wants to put the time and effort. I know he plays other sports, and, and you know, sometimes time is valuable and you, you don't have a lot of it, but... Uh, we could really use him uh, this year, especially with uh, Trevor's broke foot. We're going to have to have him also. And, uh, like uh, he's a sophomore, but he, yeah, he's 15 years old. You know? um, big upside for the kid, right. I think. A lot of maturity left for him, aren't they? Speaking yeah. of upside, another underclassman out here for Coach Plumley Jr. Jordan Aldridge coming off the bench. We saw him play a lot in JV this year, John. We yes, know he's sir. capable of being the slasher scorer, and right there he just showed some range with another three pointer. That's the fifth, uh, seventh one now for Lincoln County tonight. You know, you're going to win a lot of games when you're hitting seven threes in the first, uh, before you even start the fourth quarter up. Oh, yeah, absolutely making it rain. You know, uh, Cody Williamson, he, he's truly had the hot hand, but here in the second half, we saw Elkins and Aldridge both step up, you know, and make big shots. That's, that's where it starts, Tony, you know, for a team that, that has went through as much as they have to be able to shoot the basketball. It's just, it's, you know, such a great, Great attribute. Absolutely, John. 48-30. Lincoln County trying to push this one up to their largest lead tonight at 20. Their largest lead is actually right now at 18. I know Plumlee would like to just go ahead and ice this one over early so they can make the short trek back down to Hamlin with the victory on their, on their arms. Webster turning the ball over, and Jordan Aldridge pushing the ball quickly across the half-court line. He's going to wisely slow things down and set up the offense. He gets it out to the general himself, Hunter Lambert. He's the man that held Chase Fisher to 18 points, a season-low putout before the Wake Forest commit out of Ripley. So we know he's capable of walking about down anybody. Alex Elkins getting the baseline jump shot up no good. Remins with the putback. He's good. And once again... Lincoln County cross just crashing them boards on the offensive end and getting second chance opportunities. Now they have a 20 point lead with 37 seconds to go in the third quarter. Yeah, I think that's where uh, Lincoln County is absolutely just taking advantage of, of Webster County is on the glass. You know, uh, if you can get second ch- second chance opportunities, Tony, you can win any game. You know, you can shoot 30 percent in the field and get 10 offensive rebounds and and still win the game. That's a chance of 20 more points, you know, at least. And uh, that's what Lincoln County showed here tonight. They're missing shots. And, well, if they do miss them, they're getting back and putting them in. Yeah, you said it best. You know, it just gives your team yet op- more opportunities to score the basketball. Mm-hmm. If you can keep your turnovers down, and, uh, you know, to five, seven turnovers a game and, and, uh, and rebound on the offense and defensive end, limit their possessions and, and give yourself more possessions and, you know, the odds are in your favor. And picking up the foul there was uh, Kremens getting his first, and at the line shooting the second one is 32 Tyler Chips. He missed the first one, connects on the second to split the pair. 50 to 39 with 20 seconds left in the third quarter. Lincoln County with the inbound ball. Hunter Lambert trying to push the ball up the floor across the half court line. Going to right hand side to Kremens. Up top to Aldridge. Six seconds. Five, four. Aldridge going in. Going to get double dribble. Double dribble. With four seconds exactly on the clock, Aldridge is went in there looking for contact. And instead, got the turnover. Fifty to thirty-one. Two, one. Brent Moore shot up front rim. No good. Not a bad effort as contested as that was. But fifty to thirty-one. A twelve. A 12 to 7 run, um, you know, Lincoln County coming out and holding Webster to seven points in another quarter, less than a minute, a point per minute, and that ain't going to win you much, you know, and hats off to Plumley's boys. They're, they they brought everything to the table tonight, you know, uh, so far so good. Offensively, defensively, transition, you know, not too many dumb, costly turnovers. I mean, you had a couple, but, you know, that's expected out of about every team. Uh, no one plays a perfect game, but Lincoln County's probably, other than that Ripley game, it's probably the second best we've seen them play, John. Absolutely, Tony. It's, it's remarkable to watch, you know, the coaching job that Plumley's done with these boys as he just keeps getting pieces taken away from him. But, you know, like, like I just talked about, been able to, been able to stroke the basketball is a huge advantage. Now, Zach, is this a team that you think, uh, now, th- are they in your sectionals, Logan sectionals? 
with uh, I, I want to say I think they're in our region, not our section. Okay. Um, now, dude, they're, they're a scary team. You know, you got a team with that many shooters and and uh, and have the length and, and the ability to guard at all positions like they do. You know, that uh, that that's a scary thought for. Uh,